So now in this video, we're going to look a little bit about isosceles triangles and their angles. And if you remember in the last video with triangle sum, um, we learned that if I don't have enough given information, I can always try to add more in by performing a construction. But first, uh, before we talk about that, let's review some vocabulary about the parts of an isosceles triangle. So we know isosceles triangles have two congruent sides and that the angle formed by those two sides is called the vertex angle. The side opposite the vertex angle is called the base and the two angles at the base are called base angles. Okay. And in this conjecture, I'm trying to figure out something special about the base angles. And so if I just have an isosceles triangle, the only thing I have are that the two sides are congruent and that's it. I don't have a lot more information. Okay. But we just did a whole bunch of stuff about special points of concurrency of a triangle. And I know from the study of the points of concurrency that there's something special about the points of concurrency and the isosceles triangle. Specifically, I can go ahead and construct, let's say I'm constructing, uh oh, terribly drawn, oh my gosh. Let's call this the angle bisector. Okay, so we're going to construct the angle bisector for the vertex angle. Okay, now I'm not actually doing the constructions, I'm just going to imagine. Okay, now if you remember what's special about isosceles triangles, right, an isosceles triangle, uh, its angle bisector at the vertex angle is not just an angle bisector, right? It's also a perpendicular bisector, right? So that means it's going to chop that base in half and form a right angle. It's also the altitude and it's also the median, right? It's, it's all four, right? And if I know that this was an angle bisector, that angle is congruent to that angle, right? And these are both right angles, right angle, right angle. By that really simple conjecture, that uh, third angle conjecture, by the third angle conjecture, I know that this angle has to be congruent to that angle there, okay? Now, I was only able to prove that those two angles were congruent because I know how to construct an angle bisector. And because of our study of points of concurrency, I know the angle bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is also the perpendicular bisector. It's also the altitude and it's also the median. So that gives me those two sides congruent, that angle being a right angle. And therefore I have proven conjecture uh, 19. Conjecture 19 is called the isosceles triangle conjecture. It says if a triangle is isosceles, then the two base angles must be congruent. So then I have to ask myself, is the converse true? If I have a triangle where the base angles are congruent, is the triangle going to be isosceles? And the answer is yes. I'm not going to prove it right now. I am going to tell you this is a proof that you can do with constructions. Um, so the converse specifically says uh, if a triangle has two congruent angles, then the triangle must be isosceles. And this is actually a good exercise for you to try. Um, so you know you have two congruent angles, so just create yourself two congruent angles, and then you know copy one angle, you know make a side, copy the other angle, and then compare, and then you know create the triangle out of it, and then compare the side lengths, and uh, you'll see that the 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 two sides are going to be congruent. So this can be proven actually by a construction. You can actually construct this. So it turns out that those constructions that we made you do are actually pretty useful.